Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. I would like to read the first 12 verses. After the service, I would like to meet with the board and the ministers. So please take note. Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12. If you are there, say amen. Amen. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Amen. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judah. For thus it is written by the prophet. Amen. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then he wrote, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and mire and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod they departed into their own country another way may the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word God bless you. You may be seated. Where are all these children going? I think the officers should... uh, Let's take interest in these little ones. About seven or eight of them by my counting are living at the same time. All right. Just keep them under watch. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God helping us for a little while this morning to appreciate the goodness of God in a time like this. I want to speak on a subject we have seen his star and we have come to worship him amen we have seen his star and that we have come to worship him in the scripture where we read 
There was a particular set of people who saw the star. The star was not invincible. Amen. Just as the gospel of Jesus Christ was not done in the closet. Amen. He himself testified before the pilot when the accusers brought accusation. He said, daily in the temple, I spoke of the things that I know. I taught, I exhort, I instructed daily in the temple. Meaning that my teachings, my parables, my gospel, they were not done in the closet. They were done in the open. And he was telling them that none of you could have arrested me as it were on court if my time for such has not come. Because we are dealing with somebody who said, I have the power to lay down my life and to take it back. Nobody can say that. Nobody has ever said that. Nobody has said that and nobody will ever say that. Because nobody has that. You may be able to lay down your life but you cannot take it back. Many people had laid down their life for the cause they believed in. Amen. But no one who laid his life took it back by himself. In other words, Jesus said, I have the power to submit my life. When you kill it, I will pack it up and raise it again. Because it is the life. He said, I am the life and the resurrection. If any man believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? I'm just giving testimony about one who spoke those words of himself. And I'm saying that I can speak that of myself. I may be able to give my life for a cause I believe in, but I can't get it back. So the one who could get it back said, I taught daily in your temples. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And everything I did was not in the closet. He never fed 5,000 people in a secret place. It was noised all abroad. Amen. So this beautiful star we are talking about was visible. Amen. But you know what? As visible as he may present himself, it is only a particular class of people that can identify or recognize him. I'm believing I'm speaking to such a class this morning. You see, everywhere you turn in the scripture, you will see election. Somebody may be able to tear predestination out of his own Bible. But it will forever remain in our Bible. Even in the subconscious and conscious of that man, it will be there. It will not better. It will just be acting against what he knows. But we thank God we are not hypocrites. <laughs> so, as visible as this star may be, it can only be recognized by those for whom it is meant. This is where I'm going. And your ability to recognize the star will make you the wise man in your generation. So here is where I'm going. These men were not called wise men because they were astrologers. They were not called wise men because they were magis or magis as some people will call them or because they were shepherds. They were called wise men because they could recognize their day and the message and the star and the birth of the word because the birth of Christ was the birth of the word. Did you appreciate, do you appreciate that? 
The Bible said, you know, when Herod was making inquiry, don't worry, you will soon leave. Just enjoy this for a while. When Herod was making inquiry, where is it that such a child should be born? What did they tell him? They said, according to the prophets. Meaning the prophets were the wedge. What the prophet brought was the wedge. So what was taking place was the fulfillment of the wedge. When, Je- when God told Joseph, take Jesus to Egypt for safekeeping, it was according to the wedge. Do you catch that? Where he was to be born, the location of his birth was according to the word. That he will be born was also according to the word. Unto us a son, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. These were the words of the prophet. In Deuteronomy chapter, what is that? Chapter, is it 15 or chapter 6? He said, a prophet likened unto me. When Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive, you watch this. From the time of Isaiah till the time the virgin conceived, it was a sermon in the church. How many times will the priest have told the brethren and the young sisters, he said, you see, keep yourself clean. Keep yourself pure. Because you don't know, maybe God will be pleased to choose you to be the virgin that he will use for this great purpose. But see the foolishness of men. One day, a virgin actually conceived. And yet, the preachers of it rejected it. They rejected the virgin. They said, tell us how that happened. Do you know the understanding? They they interpreted the word to mean, God will use a virgin. Which is correct. But before a virgin can conceive, he must be what? He must be married to somebody. But when the angel came to the person that is going to be concerned. Amen? The angel told Mary the full word. What was the full word he taught Mary? He said, this virgin you will conceive knowing no man. Isaiah never said that. Amen? Isaiah said, a virgin shall truly everybody that is married a virgin. Amen? Amen? When he gets married, the prophet said, if she stays faithful in her house to her husband, she remains a virgin. Do you understand that? So there was a way these people were understanding the word. But it was only the person to whom the word was meant for that actually caught the revelation of that word. No virgin will conceive today without knowing a man. Are you catching it? So this was their understanding. When the virgin came and said, I conceive. I am with child. They said, who is responsible? He said, I don't know anybody. He said, tell that one to somebody else. They cast out Mary from the church. And yet they still went back to the pulpit the next service. And still preach a virgin shall conceive. you must realize the blessings you are living under. That God could open your eyes to have an understanding of his word. Are you catching it? So it is the same with this star we are talking about. Even though it stood there. Amen? Yet it was only some people. Others were looking at a beautiful star. But you see, it was only a special class of people that this star meant something to. Now, it was said that before that star formed, it actually appeared in a three form. (laughs) 
Oh, sure. It appeared as three, which could be called planets or stars in the galaxies. Then why these shepherds, why these people, I'm coming to them being shepherds, while these people were watching the appearance, all of a sudden, the three became enveloped into one. And it stood. The prophet agreed with that fact. This is why I'm preaching it. Amen. And he said, what was that? He said, a lot of people had theories and ideas about that. He said, but the truth is this. God was announcing that the one who was in the fatherhood as Jehovah, a spirit being above us, amen, Amen. who is also called the son, God among us, and who is called the comforter, God in us, is coming together. The fullness of that Godhead is going to be embodied in the body of a child. So what was born that day as a child was Jehovah. You say prove it. How could these people come and worship a child if it was an ordinary child? Did the Bible say they worship? They worship. Did the Bible condemn their worship? So who do we worship? Hear O Israel, the Lord thy God and unto him only will you bring worship. So Jehovah came as a child. Amen. Amen. You see, he needed to come in that form if he, be your, if he will be your kinsman. Because he must test it from the beginning like you are testing it. Amen. So that he can become the captain of your salvation. If the Bible said he is the high priest that can be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He must go through all that you ever go through. He must go through your challenges, your frustrations, your temptations, so that when you call upon him, about any situation, Jesus will say, I understand. The prophet said, you can never do much for a person until you enter into the fellowship of their condition. So this was what the almighty God was doing By becoming a baby. And it took only the wise. To understand that. They saw the. They saw beyond the veil of a child. They knew who they were dealing with. Was not ordinary child. Are you following? And the prophet said. The gift they brought. Reflected that. Oh. Oh. The gift they brought to that child reflected their thought, their honor, their impression, their respect, their revelation of who that child is. The things you do for God is a reflection of who you think Christ is. Do you hear me? So if you come to church, you don't need me to tell you, please sing. If you know who he is to you. Somebody asked the prophet. I realize that when you do anything for God. You put your all in it. The prophet said that is actually the only way. To do something acceptable to God. And he said if you respect God. You will serve him correctly. They bought gold. They brought frankincense. They brought man. Amen. And each of these gifts speaks of what they thought of him. One thought of him as what? As God the deity. One thought of him as son Jesus Christ who came in service. Hallelujah. That is why he said he came to to serve and not to be served. And that was why he was going about healing the sick, raising the dead. Meeting their needs. Then the last one thought of him as the savior. God in service of mankind to die. All the
the gift they brought reflected their revelation of who he is. Whatever you do for the Lord or for his cause is a reflection of your revelation. Action, they say, speaks louder. But I'm telling you this morning that this star, even though it's visible, yet it wasn't recognized by all. Many might have seen it, but only few recognized it for what it meant. And it is only those generation that recognizes that are called wise. Can you put on the board for me Deuteronomy, is it chapter 4 or chapter 6? Put chapter 4, if it is not 4, then it will be 6. Quick one, Deuteronomy. Eh? It's dark. Eh? It's hanging. Ah, your new laptop is hanging. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's open it together then, church. I want to prove this wise for you. You love him this morning. They said laptop is hanging. Deuteronomy chapter 4, actually. Our Bibles will not hang. <laughs> Amen. Is it whatever man does may fail? It's only what God does that cannot fail. As the Lord have the hanging. Is it coming on? All right. While it comes on, let's read. All right. I would like to start from verse 1. We're going to verse 6. But let us start. Ah, they jumped. Verse 1. Verse 1. You must get the background. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do what? I need you to respond. I need you to be alive. To do them. Amen? That ye may watch. Life is in doing what the word says. And go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. If you want to have possession of promises, do what the word says. There are some things that are automatic. Whether you pray or you don't pray. If you could just live in obedience to the word, it is life for you. You are prolonging your life. Amen. You are bringing closer to your possession, your inheritances. Am I preaching the scriptures? All right. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. It's showing how serious it is. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God had destroyed them from among you. Uh huh. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God, are alive every one of you this day. You follow idolatry, you kill yourself. Amen. You know the prophet of God said there can never be a premature death to God's own child. But here a powerful statement. He said you can walk into it. So if you don't want a premature death, stay with the word. It is costly for a believer not to stay true to the word. Amen. Amen. So you will see, Christianity to you should be beyond uh, uh, hypocrisy. Should be beyond trying to impress somebody openly. Amen. Whether you are in the closet, whether you are in the open, whether people are watching or not, be Christian. That is the path to life. All right. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do in the land whither you go to possess it. This was Moses, God's leader, human leader for the first Exodus talking. Now listen. Keep therefore and do them. Every verse told you to do them. 
For this is your watch and your in the sight of the nations we shall hear all these statutes and they will testify about saying what? Surely this great nation is a wise and so the path to being wise and having understanding is to recognize your day and your message. So these guys who were majors, shepherds, astrologers, whatever you call them, they were not wise because they were shepherds or astrologers. They were wise because they could recognize this star for what the star meant. May God help you to recognize your star. Amen. All right. When they recognized this particular star, they began to take this star for a compass. <laughs> they don't need a satellite navigator. They knew the star that has appeared did not appear for nothing. If three stars appeared and they formed into one, deity was announcing its presence on the earth. Oh man, it takes an election to appreciate this. Because as the birth of the groom was announced in the heavens, the birth of his bride was also announced. I'm coming to that. You didn't see what happened in the Bible days. I'm going to show you what happened in your day. Amen. It was three coming to one in the Bible days. It was five coming to one today. Because this bride is Miss Grace. You love him? So they recognized the star for what it was. And they decided to follow the path of the star. Could you imagine they're going home to their families and say we are going on a journey. According to history, they journeyed for about two to three years before they got to the place where Jesus was and the star never abandoned them. The star never went out of their sight. In their journey in life, they were the ones at some point that strayed away from the star. But even in their straying, he refused to abandon them. He still waited for them to come back because this star is a star of restoration. I like that song. I am so glad that Jesus loved me. Is that even though sometimes I wander away, still he does love me wherever I stray. Into his dear loving hands will I come. When I remember that Jesus loves me, the star doesn't stray, but its followers sometimes may stray. They may stray to the left, they may stray to the right. But guess what? You are the one changing position. The star is in constant position. Amen. Is in constant leadership. He will never ever repent of having made you his choice. Did you hear me? That is his constancy. In the morning you are his son. When you are right you are his son. Even when you are wrong you remain his son. Ah, 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 ah. Because it wasn't your, it wasn't it. Oh my! It wasn't how much you impressed him that made him to choose you as a son. Before you could impress him, he chose you. Did you catch that? While you were yet sinner, he called you a son. My goodness. I told you the last time. I said even the prodigal son never lost that title of sonship. When he wasn't prodigal, he was a son. When he became prodigal, he only had an adjective that is bad to his identity. Some of us carry those adject uh, adjectives. Amen. But the star remains there to trim off 
every excess flesh to cut off every adjective that the devil pin upon you because your name is to be a son and when the prodigal returned he became a restored son so what was constant was that he was a son and that is the constancy of the star you love him so these men recognized this star and they decided to use him for a compass why was it that they were the only one who recognized him <laughs> oh they could only be the only one that recognized the star because they were the only one who has what it takes to appreciate where the star will take them to they have the same material of the direction of the star in them the one who was born is called the lamb eh? John said behold the lamb of God that does what that carries away the sin of the world is that what the scripture said who is the one that cares for the lamb what are they called shepherds is that right they care for the lamb they can even die for the lamb this is why you will see in all most Christmas messages of the prophet he was always taking it from different angles he took it now from the angle of the star there was a time he took it from the angle of the shepherds and he said why it had to be shepherds it couldn't have been any other person to prove election to you to show to you that the recognition of your day and its message is not accidental it's not a guesswork it's not a chance work it was ordained to be because you've got to be in the same material sharing the same value oh my god it is only shepherds that will not be annoyed or irritated by the smell of a sheep. If you think that is easy, I'd like for you to know that the Egyptians don't like sheep. The Bible said lambs and sheep are abomination to the Egyptians. <laughs> Did you read your Bible? Did that tell you? Does it tell you that that has a spiritual meaning? Why do we look like an irritation to the people of the world? You don't smoke, you don't dance. You don't humanize. You don't use makeups. Or do you use makeups? You don't dress like they do. Amen. You don't slit your skirts to show your underneath garment. Amen. You don't cut your skirt so short you are struggling to sit down. Hallelujah. You don't do those things, so you look out to them. You become an abomination to the Egyptian. But are we going to hide our identity? We shall stand before Pharaoh and tell him we are shepherds. If Christ is the lamb, then we are shepherds. We value the lamb. We appreciate the sheep. We don't mind the smell of the sheep. We don't mind how it looks. We treasure it. We can die for it. So this is the reason the star couldn't mean nothing to other people other than those who were shepherds. And uh, when the star began to lead, oh goodness me, he led them to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem was not the bus stop. Was not the destination. They are only to pass through that. Let me tell you, this star is sufficient to lead us. You don't need consultation with the errors of this hour. When you turn away from the star, you will find yourself in the palace of Herod. 
You see, these brethren, just like all mortals, they couldn't, they were not, they got to a point that they were not feeling satisfied with the leadership of the star. <laughs> Some images began to look intimidating. And they thought they could make consultation to other people. But you see, when you abandon the star, you go into ignorance. No other person has the revelation of God for this hour than the star messenger of this hour. It's a waste of time to be consulting others. Are you listening to me? These shepherds went into Herod's palace. When they got there, they realized that they even have better understanding than Herod himself. If you follow the star, you have better understanding. Because the climax of believing in any age is the starlight of the hour. It doesn't get any better than that. That was why Moses could tell his generation, if you follow what I'm saying, there will be testimony from the nations. They will see you as people of wisdom. They will see you as people who are wise. Because it doesn't get better than the message of your day. Whatever you do, stick to this message. These guys abandoned the star. The star never told them to stop in Jerusalem. As great as Jerusalem was, it wasn't a destination. Because everything must happen according to the word. The destination of these people should have been Bethlehem. And it is actually Bethlehem. Jerusalem might be the holiest place or holiest city at that time. But God is going to make something here out of nothing. And you heard the prophet preaching wildly to Bethlehem. Are you catching it? It has to be Bethlehem because right from Genesis. <laughs> Brother, I say right from Genesis, God has ordained the path through which the Savior will come. The Savior will come from Judah. Judah was one of the twelve patriarchs. Amen? Who became one of the twelve tribes of Israel. We've shown you some time ago. Amen? And we, sh uh, we were talking about it in the Korodu last Sunday. How the birthright was rearranged. Amen? You remember that? God, God handed over what should have been Reuben to three other races. So at the end of the day, to three other tribes, at the end of the day, Reuben had nothing. And that is why today, his tribes spelled into insignificance. Levi took the priesthood. Joseph took the birthright. But Judah took the lawgiver, which is speaking of the Savior Jesus Christ. And Judah, being a lawgiver, was given Bethlehem as part of his inheritance. That was his land of possession. And if you watch, God has been making, by that pronouncement, God began to develop the path through which the Savior will come. So if these folks had that revelation, by the star, they wouldn't stop in Jerusalem. That was why everybody who became the lineage of, the physical lineage of Christ, they came from Bethlehem. Go and read your Bible. Rehab. <laughs> Rahab the harlot the same Rahab Amen. when she was redeemed by that star streak you remember she became marriageable to a general in Israel that general was a son of Judah who lived in Bethlehem they called him Salmon 
That was why when they gave birth to Boaz, Boaz did not go anywhere. He flourished in Bethlehem, Judah. And when Naomi, when Naomi started his family, he started in Bethlehem. And he left for Moab. The Bible said when she was returning, where did she return to? She returned to Bethlehem, Judah, bringing another Gentile that was necessary and essential to God's program. The Gentiles have always taken a female position, meaning these Gentiles will be called the bride. Amen. We've always taken a female position. And we've got to do that because we are to be carriers. Amen. What we are to carry has to come from the male. You didn't catch that. It has to come from the male. The male has the seed and the hemoglobin. But that seed cannot materialize until it interacts with the female. The female in redemption program is the Gentiles. And that was why Rahab was a Gentile. Ruth was a Gentile. And the bride of Jesus Christ today is the Gentile. The friends of Jesus were Samaritans. The brother of Jesus were the Jews. But his bride is a Gentile. Because Gentiles have always been female. Carriers. And what are we carrying today? We are receiving the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why it will take the Gentile and not the Jews to present the final display of who God is. Oh my God. A wonderful time is ahead, friends. God is depending on you. He's depending on me. He has no other body. Through me, we finally express himself than your body and my body. But before we can give, bring forth, we must interact with our male. We must become word of his word. Life of his life. The seed of our male is the message of the hour. You are not feeding on me. A man is what we fail. You are feeding on the unfailing body word of the son of man. So it is not the message of the Gentile. It is the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this Gentile will receive it. We be pregnant by it. So for us to be part of the blessing, in order to bring forth like Rahab did, in order to bring forth like Ruth did, we must be relocated to Bethlehem. Amen. <laughs> so all of us are living in Bethlehem. Amen. What is Bethlehem? House of God's bread. Are you here, brother? Are you in Bethlehem? You see the reason why the food was taught. The prophet saw it as a mountain of bread. Amen. Because we are back to Bethlehem. We have the uh, we have the oh my we have a we have a great storehouse of the food of the Lord. Amen. Brother Bram never stored the message of the hour just to present us as a different denomination. He did it, you know why? Because God told him store up the food. There's a generation that must be impregnated by it. This is why you will not tell the gentle bride to eat. He knows he must carry the seed of his groom. Our groom is the Lord Jesus Christ. His seed is the message of the hour. God's spoken word is the original. Is that what the word says? So the spoken word is the message. The written word is the Bible. Hallelujah. So we carry the original seed and become impregnated by it. The word becomes us, we become the word. Then we can stand one of these days and speak then ever must respond this is the program church you love him so these fellows were able to recognize the star and they were following they were following they came to Jerusalem everybody had a great impression about Jerusalem but only few people. That was why even when Christ had been born, 
and Christ grew up and started teaching things do you know their mind was still on Jerusalem <laughs> the owner of Jerusalem and everywhere is standing before them that was why he told that woman he said it's going to come to a time amen that you don't need to go to this mountain you will not need to go to that mountain amen because up till that time if your worship is not brought into the holy hills of Jerusalem it doesn't look accepted amen but God was changing dispensation amen he's going to plant his Jerusalem everywhere by what took place in Bethlehem Jesus our Lord is here this morning how many believe that he said it will come to a time that those who worship God will do what we worship God in truth and in spirit if you worship God in truth and in spirit your worship is as good as being placed in Jerusalem because somebody said I am the truth I am the life I am the spirit nobody come to the father but by me Herod has nothing to offer you than death don't go to the heralds of these hours when these people backslid it and they realized that in their backsliddenness their testimony was not improved <laughs> I thank God for them they are elect of God they know how to come back the Bible said when they came out they saw the star still waiting is waiting for you this morning. It will be the message yesterday. It is the message today. Tomorrow it will still be the same message. It doesn't wear out. It doesn't get old. Hallelujah. It's ever fresh to the believers. Then the Bible said, they started following it. And it kept moving until it got to a point and it stood then they knew that they have arrived and all they did to do was to stand under the star and by that detect the location you will never be able to locate Christ today without the star you see why many are missing him if you want to locate Christ you need the star I'm repeating it you need the star and until you follow the star you are not wise wise virgins follow the star when the star stopped all they needed to do was to look from where it stopped look down and there they found the birth of the word hallelujah and the bible said they went inside and they worshipped and their worship was accepted and their worship spoke of who God was who God is and who God will be in every church age a star always shine. What is the job of this star? To tell God's people how to find the truth. The wise man was looking for the one who called himself the truth. Do you know till Pilate died, he was wondering what the truth is. He said, what is truth? And the one who is the truth, who is truth was standing before him. And he couldn't recognize. Can you come to recognition this morning? Friends, we have received the truth. We have received the life. But it will take a wise man in this hour to recognize it. Look at these wise men. We don't know whether they are three. People call them three because they brought three gifts. Amen. But you see, 100 people can bring three things. 
Did you catch that? They could be 1,000 and they just brought three things. Amen. It is the significance of their gift. So it couldn't have been more than that. Because in those three gifts spelled the entire mission. But for the fact that they brought three gifts did not make them three. They might have been more than that. Are you catching it? Alright. So, but these wise men, they were wise because they recognized the star. They were not the only people that were on the earth. But they were the one who were elected to recognize him and brought appropriate worship. We are living at such a time that the word says, in vain do they worship me. Teaching for, com- teaching for commandments, teaching for doctrine, the commandments of men. We are living in the midst of generation of worshippers. But it will only take the wise to bring appropriate worship. You cannot bring appropriate worship until you recognize your star. Amen. Because the star gives you the revelation of whom you are to worship. And by that you know what to bring. See what their gifts were. Deity. God speaks of deity. So the world might be looking like a two or three year old child. But these wise men we are seeing God. Jehovah as a little child. Jehovah as a baby. Crying for breast milk. Jehovah trying to crawl. And maybe in crawling, pick some dirty things and try to put into mouth. And mama will run and say, I've told you not to be picking dirty things. Come on, stop that. And you will cry. <laughs> Jehovah crying. Jehovah crawling. Jehovah trying to sit. Jehovah trying to stand. Learning to walk. Jehovah toddling and stumbling. Jehovah gathering pace. Super sign. It will take only the elect to accept him as Jehovah to bring the appropriate gift. These guys were not ordinary. They were elected. And they are a shadow and a type. Amen. Do you know when Jesus grew up? The fact that he was raised among men those who saw him when he was crawling <laughs> after he grew up to adolescence he started learning carpentry work those who saw him as an apprentice who did his freedom of graduation as a full fledged carpenter those who gave jobs to him to do for them and one day you come back and he said if you don't believe I am he you will perish in your sin. No, think about that. You think it was easy to stone Jesus. You think it was easy for them to disbelieve him. You think it was easy for them to reject him. It wasn't easy. It was because they couldn't look beyond the veil of that flesh. And that is what makes these wise men wise that is what makes this shepherd the healer of God but I have no doubt in my mind if you were there that day you would choose like the wise men chose you love him today Let me come to a close. God has sent a star again. Because star is what leads. (laughs) 
And that just as the birth of the bridegroom was announced, the birth of the bride was also announced. To make the bride the same material with the groom. To make the bride power of his power, word of his word. The prophet of the Lord said, the same scripture that applied to the groom is applying to his bride. To make it so, the circumstance of their birth must be similar. In these last days, when the bride was also to be born, just as there were happenings in the heavens and the galaxies, do you know in this day, there was also event in the galaxies. The prophet said, when God wants to do anything, before he declares it on the heart, he declares it first in the heaven. He prophesies it in the word, declares it in the heaven, and manifests it on the heart. We are promised a bride. We are promised a generation that nature will groan to see their manifestation. That is you and I. Just as the stars announce the birth of Christ, stars announce the birth of his bride. In the year 1962, five stars appeared in the galaxy. This record was not made by the believers. I want you to see how important you are. You were born under a sign. <laughs> this is why you are called a peculiar people. A holy nation. Royal priesthood. A chosen generation. Whereas it was the wise men, the shepherd that were chosen in their day. You are the choice of God for this hour. And you can go into geographical history. You will find what I'm saying so. Because it was carried all over the world. They suddenly saw five stars appearing in constellations. In the days when Christ was to be born, it was three. The fatherhood, the sonship, the Holy Ghost coming into one. That was why Christ was the fullness of God earth in the body form. Did you catch that? Even the heavens declared that. Otherwise, the three stars would not become one. They all fused into one after the alignment. Then in these last days, 1962, instead of three stars, five stars appeared. Three was God's number and it's still God's number. Amen. But five belong to us. Because five is the number of grace. Miss Grace, are you here? You are not even Miss Grace again. You are Mrs. There was a time you were Miss. But now you are Mrs. Because what is going on between you and your groom now is wedding. The marriage is on. Amen. That is why when you hear the word you say I do. Your I do is your amen. So be it. Hallelujah. I have already told you that we are being married by Eastern civilization. Amen. We are married first. And our marriage is consummated before we go for reception. That is why we must bring forth first. Amen. The result of consummation will determine celebration. There are two types of celebration. Joyful and mournful. Hallelujah. A mournful celebration is a funeral. A joyful celebration what? Is rejoicing. 
is the wedding reception. Amen. In order for our celebration to be what? To be a rejoicing. Amen. We were made virgins. Sinless, pure virgin of the word. That's what the word called us. Amen. Undiluted, un- uh, uncorrupted by denominational livings. We are not engaging in spiritual fornication. If you are doing, you cannot be married. And let me tell you, the spirit of spiritual fornication is the spirit of physical fornication. It's the same thing. Hallelujah. We don't love two people. We don't show affection for two men. Our love content has been emptied for only one man. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not flatters. Amen. He is the only one we want to embrace to our bosom. He is form an imprint in us. We have form an imprint on her. Another woman will never fit. No guy will come to us and tell us I love you. Even if he does, it's his right to say what he wants. We will tell him we have no love left. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Amen. If you are still flirting with the word you are a fornicator, Christ will never marry you. He will put you away. For us, it is a message or nothing. Mm, I'm a fanatic of that. You may have your own ideas. You may have other books you appeal to. I have enough books to deal with. I understand by books. It was Jeremiah books that Daniel lived upon. It is Brother Bram's message. No, it's even wrong. It's not Brother Bram's message. It's not Brother Bram's message. He said, you are not feeding on me. If it was his message, it would be his thought. It would be his idea. But thank God for the mighty angel. When he came down and he opened the book, even William Bram said, my Bible became a new book. He said, things he taught me were better than my personal understanding. So it cannot be William Brown's message. It is a revelation of Jesus Christ. William Brown cannot impregnate me. Only Christ can impregnate me. William Brown is not my husband. Christ is my husband. He spoke to me like Paul said. I have espoused you to one husband. As a what? As a what? They don't read their Bible now. As a what? As a chaste virgin, a virgin of his word, uncorruptible. I was, he made me a virgin before I met him. I remain a virgin in him. You know why? Because I carry only his seed. And as long as I remain faithful to him, I remain a virgin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why am I taking a seat? He demanded that I bring forth. He said he wouldn't be here. But he wants me to reproduce him. Uh huh. Did you see that? He said he won't be here. But he wants me to reproduce him. So that Antioch will repeat again. It is not the first time that there was such a reproduction. Those who never met Christ have a better, great picture of Christ. Through who? Through those who interacted with Christ. The Antioch people said, uh, 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 uh. The man we heard about, these are, these are the men. These are the men of the men. Of the man. They are Christians. They are Christ-like. The Christ you preach to us, we are seeing him here. Amen. There must be a generation 
that we reproduce Christ in action, in reaction, in manner, in image, in appearance. Everything about them. We be the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not impersonators. They are genuine. They are real. So in these last days, five stars appeared. In galaxy, in geography, they call it planet or star. Three appeared when Christ was to be born. Five appeared when his wife, his gentile bride. Only the Gentiles are called bride. Don't always forget that. Because the Gentiles are females in redemption plan. Rahab was a female. Ruth was a female. And we are females. Amen. Rahab brought forth generation for Christ. Amen. Ruth did the same thing. And we are the final one. Oh sure. Because Ruth and Rahab we are our shadows. We are their realities. Amen. My goodness. Is this sitting well with you? Now look at this. When this bride that we reproduced Christ was to be born, what an appropriate time it was. 62. Five planets appeared in constellations and geographers started studying and they saw those planets align. And all over the radios, televisions, they began to, they called the scientists to start explaining what that is. Because even ordinary people who are not religious knew that those things don't happen for nothing. Are you catching it? the astrologers knew that those things don't happen for nothing. But unfortunately, none of them could pick it until the starlight. <laughs> this is why the prophet preached the message, end time seed sign. Do you understand that topic? The sign of the end of end time that can only be recognized by the seed of God. That's what it means. The prophet came to the church after he has allowed the impersonators to give all kind of interpretations. Then he said, church and the people of the world, you have listened to many theories and explanations about these five stars that came together. He said, but now, let me tell you the truth of it. So, the messenger is not going to give a theory. He's not going to do a guesswork. He's going to tell us the truth of it. Then he said, what is the truth? He said, in the Bible, when Christ was to be born, they saw a star. But he said, it was actually three stars that came into one. To announce the birth of Christ, the bridegroom. He said, but now it is five that has come together. Because five is the number of grace. It is the number of Christ's bride. He said, this one you saw is announcing the birth, the appearance, the manifestation of the bride of Christ who is already in their infancy. Hey, did that stumble you? No. Did it stumble you? No. When the wise men came, who did they meet? A baby in a manger. No. No. Amen. They meant an infant child. No. Hallelujah. And they worshiped that child. These last day stars announced the birth. Amen. The appearance, the presence on the ground of the bride of the same Christ. In that time, 
1962 nobody knew who was who because the ministry was so great to attract everybody from everywhere do you remember that it was so great that none of the denominations could deny it it was just like the council gathered in Acts chapter 4 you know what they said they said that a, not, that a notable miracle has been done cannot be denied hypocrites they admitted among themselves that it was notable why didn't they believe it they denied it openly they admitted in the closet amen the great things that have happened cannot be denied but they can't say it outside they kept it to themselves hallelujah so there were notable outstanding things that have happened debts were raised and people were not paid to, to become faint to faint and say let's raise them again people were not paid to hang their hand like this we have seen all type of things today if you are desperate to be rich you will be corrupt you are desperate for miracles you will be perverted that is why we don't run after signs and wonders we are too big for that signs and wonders follow us we are in the word so the promises of the word must follow us am I scriptural am I arrogant I'm only quoting the scripture. These signs shall follow those. There is no scripture where he said the believers will run after. If you run after the sign, you will get counterfeit. You will become an impersonator. You will become a spiritual pervert. And that is why people are paying. They are doing arranges today. 80% of what you call miracles are arrangements. Because people must live up to expectation. We have no expectation to live up to. Amen. Christ is the one we project. Not ourselves. If Christ does not help you, I cannot help you. But he said, if thou believe, you will see the glory of God. And people are seeing the glory of God. You love him? So, these notable miracles were mighty until everybody accepted. But that was 62. The bride that was already in infancy did not have an identity at that time. But heavens have declared her that she's already on the land. She's already in formation. Then what did God do to bring forth the birth it went back to the word again. What gave birth to Jesus Christ? Oh, did you catch that? Did you understand that? Gabriel spoke. He said, The Spirit of the Lord will overshadow you. Amen. And you will have a conception. And that only thing. So this didn't come by filthy things. It didn't come by original sin. This was, was not born in sin. It wasn't shaped in iniquity. That only thing in you that shall be born will be called Jesus. Emmanuel. God in our midst. His conception was holy. His birth was holy. His growth was holy. You see at what time did he become Jehovah? From conception. Because it was the word. Hallelujah. Right from the beginning. That was why the wise men worshipped him as an infant. They were not worshipping men. They were worshipping Jehovah. And he accepted the worship. And the Bible didn't call them idol worshippers. Hey, suit yourself. Amen. So if this bride is to be born, is to be made manifest from among the crowd that have gathered around the notable revival, 
and miracles, it has got to be born by what? The word. And this is why in 1963, the full birth of the word was born. When we say the full birth of the word, we did not know all the truth in 1963. Till 65, we are still knowing. And let me say this. All the things that were revealed still remain supernatural. This is why it will take times like this for some of us to come to the understanding of what had already been revealed. Did you catch it? But what God did from 63 was to reveal the entire world. He started the revelation of the entire world. And without much that was started, the great crowds that have been attracted began to pull back. Leaving only those who can accept that pure word. Because the pure word was meant and is still meant for only the predestinated. The shepherds. The shepherds. If you are not a shepherd in this hour, you cannot accept the lamb. And by the way, in our generations, we are shepherds. They didn't catch that. Abraham was a shepherd. Isaac was a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. Joseph said, when you get to Pharaoh, <laughs> tell him you are just an adder. <laughs> because an adder is a compound word for all kind of adding. You can be a cattle a goat rearer. You just say you are an adder. You are an herdsman. Herdsman. You see, herdsman today as a but your generations were headsmen. Your ancestors were headsmen. Mm. We can have a counterfeit wicked headsmen. It's a very sign that they were genuine headsmen. That was the language Joseph wanted Jacob to use. But when that great sage and his children got there, <laughs> who can intimidate your testimony? I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything. Those of you who are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, let me tell you, it is the power of God unto salvation. You are ashamed of the power of God unto salvation. That is why you are not delivered. Don't be ashamed of Christ. When they got before Pharaoh and they asked them, what is your occupation? He said, we are shepherds. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a shepherd. That is why I love the Lamb of God that carried away the sin of the world. I embrace the Lamb. I nurture the Lamb. I care for the Lamb. And that Lamb will carry me through. Those stars came and the bride was born. Amen. Amen. But how do we come to this understanding? As I close. Are you seeing what our own Christmas look like? Amen. Amen. The birth of Christ meant so great to us. But we see today what Christ is celebrating is the birth of his bride. Amen. Amen. We are born. So this is another Christmas. We started another Christmas. The mass of Christ from 62. We became visible from 63. Amen. Jesus was preaching. When he was healing the sick, raising the dead, nobody had problem with him. Amen. 5,000 had no problem. 4,000 had no problem. Amen. But among those crowd were the elect who were not visible at that time. The elect was made visible by the word except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. No life. All those, uh, what do you call them? All those shocks, yeah, they pulled back for the real seed to be made manifest. This is what has happened in this day. The mighty revivals became so small 
Amen. Amen. The 500,000 in India, 200,000 in South Africa, they thinned down. Amen. And they became a little group. By what? By the opening of the word. So this bride was born by the word. Hallelujah. How do we come into these blessings? We follow the star. In every age, a star did shine. To help God's people the truth to find. In this last day, a star has shined so bright. Beautiful star of Bethlehem. Sent his own star to us. Amen. One of the stars he held in his hand. Didn't the Bible say there were seven stars? He called them stars. And we call them nothing less. Today we call them star messengers. But they are actually stars. Amen. We are the one adding the messengers to qualify the star we are talking about. But the Bible says seven stars in the hands of him. Amen. Paul was a star. Arrhenius was a star. Martin was a star. Columbus was a star. Martin Luther was a star. John Wesley was a star. Huh? And you expect me not to say. And you expect me not to say. William Brown. God sent him to us as a star in these last days. For us to do what? For us to follow to the best place of the bride. <laughs> the bride is back in Bethlehem. House of God's bread. The secret place of the most high. Where eternal things are being fed upon. To build the total bride. So that she can become word of his word. Power of his power. Life of his life. The bride couldn't be born in Laodicea. Uh huh. Uh huh. The star took us beyond Laodicea. The star took the wise men beyond Jerusalem. He brought them to Bethlehem, Judah. Laodicea should have been our birthplace. It should have been our fitting place. But Laodicea had no place. There was no room in any of the hands. There was no maternity ward. No bed space. <laughs> when there was no bed place, God located a manger in Bethlehem, Judah. Amen. The manger is the bride's age. Amen. Still within the precincts of Laodicea, but not in Laodicea. Because the conditions of Laodicea are not ruling here. God brought us to a better condition. In this place we are not blind. Because the high serve has been born. We are not the darkness. Because the light of the world has been born. We are not naked. Because the garment of the bride has been furnished. Spiritual food in due season. Seven cosmeno. And we, we have no identity crisis. Because the world told us who we are. And what we are raised up for. Praise God. For the original life. We celebrate the birth of Christ. But today our rejoicing is in the birth of the bride. That bride was an infant in 1962. I believe he's growing now. He's coming now. To full stature. He's become marriageable. His organs are developed to carry a child, to carry a conception. And I tell you, she will bring forth. Squeeze will be a maternity time. <laughs> Squeeze will present a birth pain. Amen. She is groaning for that day of sweet release. You know, birth pain can be very squeezing. But after the pain comes what? The delivery. After the delivery comes what? Joy. Jesus said a joy that will make a woman 
who has had bad pains to forget our pains? Hallelujah. When they want to give birth, they say, Lord, if you save me out of this one, we never again. But in one year, you will see her carry another one. Because the Bible says she forgot the pain. It's a mystery, brethren. The pains will come, but it is to help us bring forth. Because this brother has been born. He's not a still bed. And she will bring forth also. What will she bring forth? She will reproduce Christ on two feet. She will produce another Christmas. God bless you. Aren't we glad this morning that we've been accounted worthy as God's Mary for this hour to bring forth Christ. Amen. It's a privilege. He said, thou art favored above all women. We are favored above all. Oh my goodness. We are favored above all virgins. Amen. There were ten virgins, but five were favored to be the wise ones. You are favored above all women to be the one to bring forth. The spirit of the Lord is overshadowing you again. Amen. Implanting the seed of the word in your heart. And there's going to be a birth pain come. And you will bring forth. And there will be another Christmas. Why not say this morning, be it unto me, Lord. According to your word. Let me bring forth your promises. Let me bring forth your prophecies. Let me bring forth your life. Let me be the reason for another Christmas. I have seen your star. Your star has revealed who you are to me. Let me bring appropriate worship. As the wise of my generation. That is a challenge, my brother. That is a challenge, my sister. We cannot see what God has done for us. And live a life irresponsible in his kingdom. Rather we will live a life of an appreciation. We will give our all. Even above our necessary means. Oh yes. Let this world prosper. Let this world materialize. Bring forth your birth in my heart. Bring forth your birth in my life. Only word long preserved. in our day has revealed who you were to us. The wise men who knew who you were brought appropriate gifts. Gift of your revelation. That is what you ask of us Lord. Let that be our life. Let that be our service. Let that be our resources. Let that be our energy. Let that be everything about us. Oh God. Short was your mercy. Short was your kindness. Let thy word impart. We say like Mary of old, be it unto us according to your word. We must bring forth again in this hour. Christ must be reproduced. There must be another Christmas. We've identified where we are. 
We are in the ground for that delivery. House of God's bread. Economy of spiritual food in due season. Christ was born in Bethlehem. Mary gave birth in Bethlehem. This bride must give birth in Bethlehem again. Spoken word seed, spoken word child, spoken word reproduction of you, Almighty God. Oh Lord, help us. Our birth was declared that we might grow to a stature where we can give birth again. Thank you for our birth. Thank you for yours. But we are looking forward to that which we give birth to. God help us to produce another Christmas. To wave you before this generation. To declare you to a to our day, in our day, stand by your church. May we never fail. May we never falter. Thank you, Lord. Love God. Oh, holy was Lamb preserved Yes, for our world in this world Oh there is sound With God's own heart Oh let the word Of God In part Yes Words of life Oh words of hope Give us strength Help us go in this world where we roam. Oh, the one of God will guide us home. Oh, word of God, ever true, all oh, changing me, changing you. We have come with open all life. Lord Jesus, may your word impart, may it materialize. Let that seed come to life. Let it be dramatized. Let there be a bringing forth. The world is going through its bad pain because a delivery is about taking place. And then we are going to be taken through a time of squeeze, a bad pain for the church. That we might be able to bring forth. Reproduce Christ on two feet again. To present the world another Christmas. Father, we thank you for the favor. We thank you for making us the Marys of this hour. In whose womb the seed of your word will materialize. Lord, let your word impart. Let your word have free course. Oh, take it up, Lord. Take it up, Lord. Show to us your mercy. The message of the star revealed who you are. May the revelation help us to bring us appropriate worship. Oh God, may it give us such a quickening. The desperation that is our call for that we might serve you with all our heart. Help us never to bring the sacrifice of fools. But Lord Jesus, may we bring the right offerings. May we bring the right worship. May we bring the right sacrifice. Oh God, sacrifice of your revelation. Do it for us, dear Father. 
If there be any need, Lord Jesus, I pray this morning you will supply. If anyone by your word has found their need, their weakness, their insufficiency, their deficiency, Lord, I pray you will come by. Fill it up for your children. Fill up these vessels. Fill up these vessels, oh God. Fill up these vessels, almighty God. Give us grace in your sight. May you dismiss us with your blessings now. Give us a refreshing time. And please return us back into your presence again to continue to dine and wine at the Lord's table. Thank you, Father. May the after speaker take this few words and implant it as revelation upon every heart. Give us that grace to follow the star wholeheartedly. May we never turn here, may we never turn there. May we be satisfied with the leadership of the star. Because it is not the star leading by itself. The star is leading by the message. The words of Jesus Christ. Oh God, let that be dear to us. Help us to set that word before us. In everything that we do. We know as we receive the word, we receive the life and the spirit of the same. Let it give us a baptism and a cleansing this morning. Thank you, dear Father. Go home with us, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.